Welcome back to Elevation 44. It's your girl B, or Elevation as some people like to call me. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back family. Today we are diving all into the Capricorn full moon because we have another full moon that is happening on June 24th at 2.39 p.m. Eastern time so you got to translate that to your local time zone of course and this new full moon I wanted to say new moon no not new moon full moon is happening at three degrees now in numerology three degrees is actually or the number three is actually associated with the planet Jupiter which is about fortune wealth success joy optimism and this is very much the theme that is running through this entire full moon. The energy around this is just so positive, so optimistic. There is lots of like just good blessings just raining down, okay? So this is also known as the strawberry moon. And the strawberry moon just coincides with the time of the year where you know berries are just in abundance they're at their peak and so that's why strawberry moon is what is associated with this capricorn full moon it's the peak of summer right so this is bringing us just kind of thinking or playing on the whole strawberry moon term it's like the sweetness of the strawberry is really what this is the sweetness of this moon and it's a time to be really excited and it's a real good time to just tap into all of what is going to be available and all the abundance that is being offered to us as we pave something new as we you know, bring or solidify the new things that we have been going after and that we're still continuing to pursue or try to call in. This is really what this is all about. Now, <laughs> this is happening, this full moon in particular is happening four days after the summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere and that is just already a time of where the sun the energy the vitality the abundance the blessings the magnetism is really really high so we've got that energy lingering and then we also have um jupiter which is trining the sun right now which is really um a harmonious exchange of energy um it's really a synergistic uh just real good support if you think about kind of um, siblings who kind of support each other and really tight and get each other and um, that is kind of like the energy that this is bringing in between the Sun and Jupiter this is one of the best transits that you can come across okay because with this the, you got that fortune you got that good luck you have those blessings of wealth opportunities like I mean it's just literally taking that and magnifying it and so that is why I want to really dive into this theme and to talk about that and how you can capitalize on that in this um, during this time and go into it in this video so we're gonna talk about um, really what the focus of this energy should be for you some ways that you can do some rituals to capitalize on it and also the herbs and the crystals that you can use and then we're going to talk about you know some of the other transits that are happening so that you're aware of all of the energies that are our play during this full moon okay now what is capricorn in general right capricorn energy is really about our ambition it's about our goals it's about our career it's about our responsibility um our it's it's really about how we integrate ourselves externally in this world right so this is really what the capricorn energy is 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 really like um capricorn moon um when the moon is in capricorn it really is more of a rigid harsher um stricter very focused goal oriented just very um wanting to solidify status and achievement and get itself very um firm 
and rooted because this is an earth sign right um capricorn is an earth sign so it's really about the material and mastering the material and setting goals and, and achieving it and getting certain levels of status so this the 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 energy around the Capricorn moon can be kind of cold and rigid and very calculated, very exact <laughs> in the way that it approaches things. But because of all the energy that we have here with the sun and Jupiter, and then we have um, some retrogrades happening, we have this week um, a, you know, Neptune retrograde that is coming a day after this moon and then we have also jupiter that um is stationing to retrograde um a couple days prior to this moon right so when these planets are stationing when you have you know jupiter and you have neptune stationing and then you also have a um, mercury that is stationing to go direct because you know it's been in retrograde for the past couple weeks when these planets are still when they're stationing they're still and that means that their energy is intensified even more so we are definitely getting a different flavor of this capricorn moon or this capricorn full moon because of all of those things happening and just because of all the positive things that are actually being added into this soup um, of energy that we have going on here okay so when we talk about capricorn energy we need to talk about saturn right because saturn is what rules Capricorn energy. That's the planet that is over Capricorn energy. And where is Saturn right now? Saturn is retrograding, right? Through Aquarius, okay? And this is really a time of inner reflection, of refocusing on some of the things that we talked about, which is our goals, which is our responsibility, our discipline, um, and helping us really, because when Saturn is in Aquarius, it's really trying to build new foundations, new structures, okay? So this is about, you know, basically moving us past the restrictions and into a place of true freedom by helping us to build those new things and get the self-discipline that we need for long-term success. So this is really about setting up everything new and I feel like we've been on this theme of like the new things, the new things for the past couple of months, but even more specifically during like the past few weeks as we've been moving through eclipse and retrograde season, okay? So we are really trying to get into a place of true freedom and that's freedom on all levels, okay? So the dream job or goal that you felt that was impossible, that has always seemed out of reach, is a lot more accessible than you realize. And this energy is going to help you see and realize that, okay? So I will say lastly, before I start to get into the rest of the things, that if you are keeping track of, you know, working with these new moons and these full moons, you need to go back and look at the intentions that you set at the Capricorn new moon back in January, because this is a time where you can see those seeds, those intentions that you set forth then, where they have blossomed. Here are the um, facts about the Capricorn energy or the Capricorn full moon. So the element that is associated with this energy is Earth. Again, this is all about the material realm. Um, the quality or mode is cardinal. So this is an initiation or a starter energy. This thing gets things going. We set goals and we're going, right? We're going to make it happen, okay? So that is the cardinal energy. The planet, like I said, that is associated with um, Capricorn energy is Saturn. So this is about your lessons. This is about your restrictions. This is about your responsibility. But Saturn is also very rewarding to those who are focused, disciplined, and responsible. So you get big rewards from Saturn. Saturn is often, um, I hate to say it, demonized. Like, oh my God, Saturn. I actually love Saturn energy, but I'm Saturn dominant. So, you know, it is, it is what it is. I've learned to love this energy, even though it does bring in hard lessons. It's very, very, very rewarding when you are structured with this energy okay um the house that is associated with capricorn is the 10th house the 10th house is the house of your career and your public image very much about your external wants needs and your external self and then the polarity to this energy is cancer right because the sun is in cancer um so cancer is all about your private needs and desires and self and it's about your home your family your roots so it's 
just kind of the opposite of um, the Capricorn energy, okay? Some of the gifts with this energy are ambitious, organized, practical, disciplined, um, responsible, hardworking. Um, some of the challenges with this energy is pessimistic, suspicious, critical, cold, can be overly cautious and materialistic, okay? So what is the focus of this energy? Where should you be putting your attention? Well, this is really all about going after what you've considered impossible up until this point. The things that have seemed out of your reach, the things that you have not had the confidence to take that step or leap for, the, the goals that you have kind of had moving in your head but not solidified or written down or felt like you were um, equipped enough or um, believed in yourself enough to go forward and, and achieve, this is really about going after the impossible, okay? Going after what's out of reach, okay? A new door is being opened for you. And all of the things you didn't have access to before, you have access to now. Um, and when I go through the transits, you're gonna actually see what I am talking about in terms of those new um, levels of access but this is coming in the form of resources. This is coming in the form of whether it be material resources like money, it would be people, it be opportunities. There are things coming in to support what you deemed impossible. But you have to feel and believe that you are worthy of having that. Now, I will say if you're new to working with full moon energy, it is best to do so within the five day span around the full moon. So that would be two days prior to the full moon, the day of the full moon, and two days, up to two days after the full moon, okay? So that is like the time span I tell people to really work with um, this moon energy. I have a whole video where I talk about you know how to work with the full moon so i'll go ahead and drop that in the description box below i also leave in the description box how you can find where the moon is transiting for you specifically what house or area of focus is it drilling down on for you so i'm going to go ahead and you know again that's going to be in the description box um so that you can pull that up and find out you know what you need to be focused on and also i'm going to link down below the jupiter um, retrograde video and um, the Neptune retrograde video so the Neptune retrograde video will be coming out after this video so just stay on the lookout for that if that's not going to be in the description box when I post this okay so let's talk about the transits that are going to be happening um, during the full moon and again these transits are what the moon is making in terms of its contact with the other planets if you want to find out like the whole scope of all the planets and what everything is doing during um, this time I have a video that I just put out um, a few days ago it's called the cancer season video and that kind of gives you the transits for the entire cancer season span so again I will link that down in the description box below you can't say you're not without information and resources here okay so anyway the first transit we're gonna talk about is the moon sextiling Jupiter in Pisces okay so we've been talking a lot about Jupiterian energy all throughout this video and that's just going to be the theme like i told you this is what we are getting blessed with okay so when the moon is sextiling jupiter the sextile is a really harmonious easy exchange of energy it's just an easy free flowing back and forth like i'm gonna give you my good qualities you're gonna give me yours and we're just gonna trade back and forth okay um again jupiter it's all the things that we've been discussing expansion luck optimism success but it also can you know it can lend itself to excess right so the things the areas where we tend to kind of get excessive or out of control because we don't know how to rein it in so there's always two sides to um every planet um the good aspects and the challenging i feel like with jupiter we always hear the good aspects and we don't necessarily focus on some of the challenges that can come in but with this transit it's good right 
So we're bringing in optimism, fun, success, fortune, happiness, okay? This is a time where we intuitively connect and understand not only the needs of ourselves, where we're going, what we want, what we're doing, but we're also understanding the needs of others as well, okay? This can increase our popularity and give us the the energy or the opportunities to connect with influential people that can help us with the things that we're trying to do okay um like i said before the sun is also going to be trining jupiter um and i know we were just talking about the moon transits but i also want to mention the sun here because this is a prime energy for multiplying good things this is raining down blessings of opportunity so this is really a time for you to tap in and cash in okay do not waste this <laughs> do not waste this opportunity so the moon sextiling jupiter is the big one to really keep our eyes on because that's going to be the major thing that's happening but there are a couple of other transits that i want you to keep in mind because as the moon moves through the sign of capricorn these are some of the other things that are going to be happening so the moon is also going to be sextiling neptune okay which is also in pisces at some point so this is really um really getting into our creative pursuits and highlighting that this is helping us touch people emotionally because of the heightened sensitivity so like when we talked about before our intuitive knowing of what others are, are need during this time, this is also giving us that extra boost to touch people emotionally with the things that we create, the things that we do, and the way that we pour out into um, the world, okay? We also have the moon that's going to be trining Uranus, which is in the sign of Taurus at some point. So again, this is helping us leaning on our intuition because you just have an unexplained knowing. You just know and you can't explain how you know and that's okay because it's a gift. It's that intuition, that higher self um, uh, guiding you and helping you understand what is really going on. You sense something is about to happen, so this brings changes and excitement embrace it embrace it you're sensing like there's something around the corner there is something around the corner embrace that feeling and don't feel like you have to explain or feel like you have to have it all figured out on why you feel the way you feel just embrace it and go with it okay um the moon is also going to be conjuncting which means blending its energy with pluto which really is about our control <laughs> It's about a power and control, okay? So when it is blending its energy with Pluto, it's going to be increasing our intuitive insights again and making us, sometimes it can make us obsessed with the things that we find emotionally fulfilling at that time. So balance is really required. Like we can get into stuff and just get obsessed, obsessive, because <laughs> Pluto can bring out this obsessive qualities, okay? So balance is required here. But Honestly, it's it's more of a good thing if you lean on the strengths. The moon also will be opposite or having conflict with Venus um, at some point as well. So this increases our need to feel good. Um, that can be by any means though, right? Again, <laughs> we got to find that balance because what we find emotionally fulfilling or the things that we find feeling good can take us in the opposite direction, okay? So again, with this, don't overdo it on food, sex, or anything that stimulates you at this time um, or anything that substitutes the emotional fulfillment that you're seeking. So if something is bringing you kind of that, you know, that thing that, that makes you feel good because it's, it's replacing something else that you need, you know, just find a balance with that. And lastly, the moon is also going to be having tension, which is squaring Chiron, which is... Um, Kind of our deepest uh, wounds and Chiron is an Aries which speaks to our identity wounds our self wounds right so this is really helping to push us out of our comfort zone to get out of that place of doubt to get out of that place of not believing in ourselves and to be pushing ourselves forward and out of the comfort zone okay so those are the transits that are happening the herbs um, that I would recommend you working with, of course, if you have the Capricorn Moon Tea, um, you go ahead, please work with that during this time. If you don't have it, you can also um, get it uh, linked down in the description box. That's a good a tea to work with, not just for the Capricorn Full Moon, but also throughout the year whenever you need to call on those types of energies or attributes um, of Capricorn Moon energy. And um, 
Some of the others are going to be tied to abundance, which we is the theme throughout this, the abundance and blessings. And then um, also just the vision, the vision to help you see forward and to really believe in what you're doing and just kind of expand your vision, okay? So the herbs are going to be comfrey, um, thyme, and hemp. Yes, hemp. Kind of boss. <laughs> um, the crystals that I would recommend working with are definitely about prosperity, multiplying that prosperity, that joy, that abundance, that good fortune. So we're talking about sapphire, pyrite, and citrine, okay? Now let's get into the rituals. So the first thing that I would say ritual wise that you can do is to strengthen any of the work that you started at the Capricorn New Moon. I know we spoke about this earlier, so that's it. <laughs> strengthen that work. So if you need to put your additional magic, intention, energy into the work that you started then, you're seeing those crops starting to sprout out, they need some more miracle growth, this is the time for you to do that. This is also the time for you to um, review um, those intentions that you probably set at that time and see where you need to pivot, where you need to plant new seeds, how you need to change things up. This is just a time for reviewing those goals and to, you know, go forward in that way, all right? The second thing that I would recommend ritual-wise is really... Um, increasing because of the emphasis on Jupiter's energy and Neptune's energy which are both in Pisces which is really about spirituality it's our, our faith it's it's about really having compassion for not only our you know others but for ourselves as well but this is really about increasing your faith and personal power the faith in yourself because a lot of the times we are dreaming up these big plans right because this whole Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces about dreaming, dreaming the, the biggest dream. <laughs> and then we don't feel like we can, we don't feel worthy. Um, so it's really about strengthening that faith in yourself, um, sitting with yourself, pouring into yourself, really giving yourself positive affirmations, really um, writing, speaking, and, and telling yourself these things and, and almost like you have it on a loop in your mind until it becomes solidified. Because you say it enough, you read it enough, you hear it enough, it starts to become a reality for you. So this is a really about pouring into yourself, believing that you're worthy, which starts with self-love. So I would definitely work on the solar plexus chakra, which is tied to our personal power and our strength in ourselves. And then also the heart chakra, which is really tied to our self-love, just loving ourselves and believing that we can and we will do what we set out to do because it's coming from a place of real love for ourselves and real desire to be the best and highest version of ourselves, okay? The next ritual that I would recommend or area of focus, I would say, is multiplying that abundance, that happiness, that joy, whatever. You have something that is going well, you have areas in your life that are abundant or you start to see things sprouting or you are happy with certain things, just work some magic on multiplying that because this energy is all about multiplication of everything good. So really your money and abundance rituals are gonna come in handy here. With that solar practices and heart chakra work are going to work on magnetizing and attracting to you the things that you feel that you deserve. <laughs> um, that's really the point. You're going to magnetize. You're not going to even have to go out and get it. It's just going to come to you, okay? Um, and then the last thing I would say that I want you to do is this is really calling us to step out of our comfort zone in a lot of ways. So what I would like you to do, because the comfort zone, getting out the comfort zone is the hardest part. Write down three things that you can do even if it's small, three ways that you can step out of your comfort zone. So if you have a fear of speaking in front of people, write down a way that you can speak maybe in, in front of a small audience. If you, you know, whatever the, the thing is, push yourself. Three things, just three small things that you can do to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Because once you start seeing that you are capable of doing the things that you subconsciously fear that you can't, it really is gonna open up for you, okay? So, 
that is everything. I think that this um, was a lot, but should be very, very helpful for you, very insightful for you. Capricorn gang gang, where you at? Where are my cappy moons, okay? Where are my cappy suns? Where are my cappy risings? I'm cap rising. <laughs> I'm biased. I'm cap rising. Cap rising. Where y'all at? I love my cap rising people. I don't care what no one says. I love y'all. <laughs> so hit me in the comments um, down below. Drop your, you know, Capricorn signs. If you don't have any Capricorn placements, leave the house that Capricorn rules for you, okay? Capricorn rising. It rules my first house. I'm sure you guys can tell with the way I'm structured with my notes and the way that I come off. I'm very, very structured and organized, and I love that. I love that about myself. Um, so, I'm done. I'm done, I promise. I'm done talking. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go on ahead, join the family, subscribe down below because the next video coming out is the Neptune Retrograde video. You're not gonna wanna miss that one, okay? So I will see you all really soon. Happy full moon. Mm -hmm.